Hello everyone, so there's been a bit of breaking news in bowling that came out uh, last night on the 27th of April and it regards uh, string pins and the USBC has announced that they've actually certified string pin bowling and essentially what this means is they've, they've certified string pin setters and string pin bowling as an independent category of both equipment and competition and this will be effective as of the 1st of August 2023. They've released a full report on this as well as this video which we're going to take a look at in this uh, video today and just talk through the, the key points because there's quite a lot of interesting stuff in there and I thought it would be good to do a little video on this today. So one of the main things the USB-C have announced is they've actually changed the specifications for the string pin uh, setters and so now they've reduced the string length to a minimum of 54 inches. They appear to have done a lot of testing on this and they found that this reduction in the length to 54 inches has had a pretty huge impact on the scoring pace. So their data indicates that a strike percentage on string pin bowling will be around 7% less than when using free fall pin setters and this could result in an average difference as large as 10 pins or more. I mean, this is absolutely huge. We're not just talking about a, a one or two percent change or a, a pin or two difference. To up to 10 pins or more. I mean, that, that's a huge number and it creates so many problems. There's good and bad points to it, I guess, in terms of, OK, it's going to bring the scoring pace down. But it's really about like the discrepancy between free fall and string pins that is a problem and having a 10 pin uh, difference I mean it's absolutely huge however I know many of you out there simply do not like string pins and to be honest I find it very hard to, to disagree I, I'm in two minds I haven't to be honest I haven't bowled on string pins enough to make a final decision uh, so I, I can see both sides of it I personally for my own opinion I would need to bowl a lot more on strings to make a final decision but yeah, I, I can certainly see there is a big difference. Now, one of the biggest things that I felt the disadvantages of string was when it came to the spare conversions. Now, this is something that's addressed early on in the report as well. Uh, and they refer to it as unusual spare conversions. Now, if we look at the video that the USB-C posted, we can see the, some examples of exactly what they mean by unusual spares. So you can see here that the ball hits the, the two pins on the split and clearly on a free fall uh, machine, this would never ever spare. However, on strings, you can basically hit the two pins at any angle with a lot of pace and they will just flick up and because they're on string, they are much, much more likely to spare. And you see this on splits like that. You also see it on washouts as well. You just hit the head pin and the pins just fly everywhere and it's a spare. However, on a normal uh, free fall pin spotter, it would not spare. But what the USB-C have said is that this change in the length to 54 inches has apparently eliminated this unusual spare conversion rate. And if that is the case, that is fantastic because that does solve that problem, which I felt was a big problem. Now, another big issue that we have is the averages when it comes to both free fall and string pins. Now, if you bowl on a string pin league, for example, and the scores are 10 pins lower, then it creates a problem of using averages, you know, in certain centers. The averages obviously are going to differ quite a lot between free fall and string. But from what I can tell from the report, there still really hasn't been any decision made on this. If we look at the uh, FAQ page, we can see that the USB-C have addressed this in several points. And if we look at point seven here, we can see that they say that they're still collecting data to determine how the averages compare. And also that they're, they're trying to still figure out how you can essentially convert an average from free fall to string. And if we look at point eight here, can a tournament conducted on free fall machines use averages established on string pin set of machines? And the answer from the USB-C is no. Essentially, they are still collecting data to determine how this is going to work. So this does pose a pretty big problem for handicapped tournaments. And 
before this is certified in, in August um, of this year, I'm pretty sure the USB-C is going to have to figure out some way of converting these averages to make it as fair as they possibly can. So hopefully in the next three or four months uh, before August, we will get a final word on this from the USB-C. Now there was another interesting point regarding the certification of machines that string pin machines that were installed say several years ago and you can see here that the word on this is that the oldest string pin setters well not all of them will meet the new requirements so it will require you know an inspection to determine if they're actually going to be able to be certified or not and to me i guess this raises the question whether the centers that installed string pin uh, machines say three years ago are they going to want to then make further changes how much more of an upgrade is going to be needed to meet the new certifications and are the centers going to be willing to do that what's the benefit to the centers uh, especially if the centers aren't particularly uh, fussed about league and tournament play i can't see all of them wanting to then make further changes when they've literally just had to spend a load of money in the last three years to convert to string pins so I suppose the USB-C is going to have to try and convince these centers to make further changes if they have some of the older pin setter machines that now do not meet the new criteria. But my initial worry would be that some of these centers just aren't going to, to feel the need to potentially have to spend more money to meet these new uh, certification requirements. Now another thing we really do need to look at is the tangle rate as the USB-C refers to it as. So if you've ever bowled on string pins, you know that uh, sometimes you get the, the strings tangled together and sometimes this will resolve it, itself, but other times this has to be done you know, manually, right? So by like a member of staff or the tech team. But just take a listen to what they say in this video about the tangle rate. And these are the numbers that they've come up with and they show just how many tangles you're going to get in a typical three game series during a league. At a tangle rate of 1%, that is approximately 26 tangles per three game block. While tangles for the most part are a simple stop for a staff member to clear, this many tangle stops were a usability concern from the preliminary specs that affected all three pin setters similarly. It really starts to add up to a lot of tangles in a session. Uh, so. Uh, we were cognizant of that and we, we met with the manufacturers and we worked together and we tried to find a solution. So we said, okay, they weren't doing this before, they're doing it now. Is there a middle ground? Now, I don't know about you, but I thought the whole point of going to string pins was they're meant to look after themselves, right? It's meant to remove the whole issue of the mechanics having to constantly make repairs to uh, free fall machines. And I thought that that was the whole point of string pins, that it solves that issue of not having to deal with breakdowns. Well, this is a huge contradiction then, because 26 tangles every three games, that's a pretty high number. And as this guy himself says in the video, these add up over yeah, more games and, and a longer period of time. So you can imagine during a tournament with a number of games, this can be a real issue. I will leave a link to the full report as well as this FAQ page as there's loads and loads of, of information there that will probably answer most of the questions you have regarding all of the certification rules and also like the pinfall rules as well. So it's definitely worth a look as there is some interesting information in there. But just to summarize all of this, I think the key thing here is we're still in the very early days of string pins and there's still a lot more testing that's needed. The USB-C has kind of dropped this announcement, um, but not really kind of cleared a, a lot of stuff up. There's still a lot of things that are in the air, especially when it comes to the averages between the string pin centers and the free fall centers. So a lot of bowlers are gonna have a lot of questions, but unfortunately we just don't have the answers to a lot of these questions at the moment. And the main response from the USB-C is still, well, we're doing more tests we don't yet know. So I guess all we can do is wait to see how this all pans out. But unfortunately, this announcement, it isn't going to please a lot of people. And this may well turn a lot of bowlers away from the game now who, who just will not accept string pins. And, uh, you know, I, I get it. I mean, it's, it's not ideal at all. 
if we had the choice, of course we would just say we want the free fall pin machines. But unfortunately, it's out of our control. It comes down to the centers wanting to save money, centers doing everything they can to survive. And that means putting in string pins in a lot of centers. And I suppose it comes down to one thing. Would you rather have no centers or would you rather have centers open and available and close to you with strings? That's essentially what it comes down to because centers, we just had to accept that unfortunately string pin, it's, it's not going any, anywhere. But unfortunately, that's not going to please a lot of bowlers out there. So let's open up the debate in the comments section. I'm sure this will invoke a pretty strong reaction. But yeah, leave your comments below. What do you think about this certification news? And do you like string pins? Or do you feel that they're actually ruining the game? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this little video. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Thank you, bowling fans. And see you all next time.